So you just hold that out at 45 degrees and it drops straight down. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, that's great, thanks. No problem. Um, I'm sorry about earlier. Oh, it's fine. It's yeah. just I thought your quote included that and uh, when you said it didn't, I... Um... Don't worry about it. Well, I was a bit rude to you. Well, I was, I was very rude to you. It's fine, honestly. But I shouldn't have called you that. Not a problem. Good, well, I'll, uh, I'll go and get my checkbook. <clears throat> Thanks very much. Bye. <laughs> this is the BBC. We interrupt the light program for a news flash. Whitehall has confirmed that the Nazi invasion of Greece has been successful and that a full-scale evacuation of Allied ground troops, aircraft and aircrew has taken place. In a statement, Mr. Churchill said that although the days ahead... I bought some really nice trousers in Camden. Yeah. <laughs> It's well hardcore with all pockets and shit. <laughs> you gonna wear them in the plane when you're doing fighting and this and that? You know what? What blood? I isn't allowed. Or something. <laughs> no way. For sure. They ain't uniform or something. And I can only wear uniform. This is me. They is awesome trousers, man. This is them. <laughs> You've got to wear uniform. That's so unfair. That's like massively disrespecting of your trousers. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? At my school, right? At my school, we had a non-uniform day, and if you brought in two bob, you could wear your own clothes. And that was a well strict school, man. <laughs> Winchester. They should let us do that here, right? Because they're, like, restricting me as a person. They're removing my rights. We're supposed to be fighting for freedom, and they're taking away my trousers. You just want to be you, isn't it? Isn't it, though? Isn't it? But I'm always myself, and I don't care what anyone says, because this is me, I'm myself, and I'm always me, yeah, and that's what I am. That's so true, because some people just aren't themselves, are they? They're like someone else or something, and they're not them. I like it when we talk about the deep stuff. <laughs> anyway, I'd better catch you later. I've got to go and talk to the group captain. Why? Something about me painting my Spitfire yellow. He says I'm not allowed. <laughs> Harsh. Tell you what, I'll buy an ice cream at the cafe and I think we'd probably better be on our way. Dad, do we have to go so soon? Well, I promised your mum I'd have you home by seven. Dad? Yeah? Why did you and mum get a divorce? The thing is, Paul... It was all your fault. <laughs> See, mum and I were perfectly happy before you came along. What really drove us apart was the strain of trying to keep two careers going while having to look after you. The relentless daily grind, no let-up, no relief, no chink of light. And then your mum lost a figure, put on too much weight, and mislaid her libido. Sadly, you destroyed our relationship. <laughs> Go on, mate. Race you to the cafe. Go on, please. The jet's on the runway. Let's move it, people. The share price has dropped four points. Hold for six. Hong Kong won't pay ball. They will. Frankfurt didn't invent Frankfurt. OK. A swan's wings can break your arm. Right. If you take two paracetamol and drink a can of Coke, you faint. Got it. Neil's dad's got a ball. She keeps it in the garage and only drives it on Christmas Day. Yeah. Bruce Lee was the hardest man who ever lived. Uh-huh. This says Audrey Hodgson is a lesbian. Understood. <laughs> Hi, honey. Forgot my files for that meeting. Here, Peter. What? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Happy birthday! Well, it's not my birthday for six months. Sorry. Happy Christmas! In April. <laughs> Merry Easter! <laughs> this is a surprise Easter party for me. <laughs> yes! Fancy dress! Oh, you shouldn't have! <laughs> well, you've been working extremely hard, Roger, and we thought we should. Celebrate you working hard. <laughs> but where are the others? 
Honey? Um, I thought you were ringing people, Peter. Ah, sorry, Roger. It looks like it'll just be the two of us. Oh, well, I can't think of anything I'd like more. My wife and my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I suppose it would have been difficult getting hold of people on a Monday morning. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, a lot of people are busy at 9.30. How did you know I was coming home? Well, I saw you in your car. But I wasn't in my car. You, Jeff dropped me off. If you'll let me finish, Rog. I saw you in your car last week, and then I saw you in Jeff's car this morning. <laughs> Well, this is so thoughtful of you. Uh, I've never had a surprise Easter party first thing on a Monday morning before. I'll get some drinks. <laughs> Look, I'm glad you're here, Peter. You know, I mentioned last time I thought Holly was having an affair. <laughs> yes? Well, there have been developments. What do you make of that? It sounds like Holly's friend, Margaret. <laughs> you sure? I've never been more certain of anything in my life. I don't remember Margaret buying her a sexy negligee. Oh, yes, no, she definitely did that. Yeah, no question. I remember Holly told me when we were planning your surprise Easter party. <laughs> Women often buy sexy night clothes for each other. <laughs> Don't try and understand women, Rog. Life's too short. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to get any booze. Is milk okay? <laughs> Holly, what do you like? <sighs> Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. Hadn't you better be going to your meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. His party. Him no tidy up. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Need I introduce at the piano? Well-known musician, entertainer, raconteur, and all-round blackguard, Teddy Fife. Good evening. Which must make me Donald Brabbins. If we're looking a little tanned, it's because we've just returned from the continent, where we've been touring our review. A shoddy piece of work. Shoddy, but surprisingly lucrative. <laughs> Last time Fife was in Italy, it was in a tank. Isn't that right, sir? That's right. He was fleeing from the Allies. <laughs> <laughs> He fought with the Nazis, you know. <laughs> now, the next song is about the delights or otherwise of neighbours. Love thy neighbour, the good book says. Matthew 5, 43. Well, we do believe in upholding the letter and the spirit of the law, don't we, Five? Quite so, quite so, absolutely. We've been caught red-handed too many times to be cavalier about it. <laughs> I've got a certain neighbour. I saw her only today. She's well into her forties, or even older, I'd say. She's still got a glint in her eye, a twinkle, a sparkle, a smile. The honest truth is, I know what I'd do. If the chance should arise, I would. Wouldn't you? I still do Mrs. Palmer. She's jolly and sprightly and spry. She looks like a dinner lady, but she's got a wild beat in her eye. I bet she's really dirty. She's been several times from the block. Where some bill and cool, she would turn the air blue and get down on all fours and latch onto your car. I have my own business, small, but mine. Then, for a number of reasons, that went into receivership, so did a bit of mini-cabbing, uh, and someone talked from a car. Nightmare. Uh, that was the end of that. Then my wife came in with the ad, and to be honest, I thought, you have got to be joking. But after six months walking around the house in your slippers, you think, why not? And that's when I became a teacher. Failed in the real world. Then why not be a teacher? <laughs> I was a bit reluctant initially, but uh, it's on BBC One now, so um, <laughs> career-wise, it's, uh, it's a biggie. I'm sure there'll be one or two family skeletons. Uh, not as many as Bill Oddie. <laughs> Probably about the same as Stephen Fry. Yeah. Well, I've already done a bit of rummaging on my father's side, but what really intrigues me is my mother's side. Um, especially my grandmother. And, uh, yeah, I mean, literally all I know is that she... she grew up in Bermondsey. Yeah. 
Right. OK, well, we have managed to track her down. Wow, fantastic. Yeah, she's here. Look, in the, this is the 1921 census. Yeah. And, uh, and she's in here with her four sisters, your great aunts. Here we go. Oh, wow, there they are. Florence oh, Agnes, Agnes Davis Dave. of 14 Tadmarton right. Road, uh, age 20, 20. whore. <laughs> Yes, um, prostitute, cool girl. No, no, yeah, no, I understand. Um. <laughs> um, well, Tad Martin Road was a was a notoriously poverty-stricken part of town at that time, so. Uh... So many of the girls would have been driven by necessity to. Um... Yes, I, I think that's very likely. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Florence. It, I mean, it just, it just makes me so angry to think that, you know, that she'd find herself in such a terrible situation. You know, just totally trapped. Well, she didn't stay trapped, no, because uh, here we are. This is the, the census of 1931, so ten years later, and, uh, and we find she's no longer in Tadmarton Road. No, she's now in Radway Gardens, which is, uh, which is a much plusher part of town. Right, I see. And, uh, and she's no longer classified as a whore. Uh, here we are, Florence Agnes, Agnes Davis. Davis, seven Radway Gardens, now aged 30, brothel keeper. <laughs> So she's uh, she sort of moved up into management, as it were. <laughs> and, uh, and what's also interesting is that uh, is that all of her sisters are here. So uh, so your great aunts as well. Here we are, uh, Edith Bertha, age twenty, whore. Victoria Mary, age nineteen, whore. Eliza Jane, whore. And Susan Elizabeth, who, who's just sixteen, whore. Actually, um, you know what, I, I think I'm more interested in my father's side. <laughs> well, that's um, given me a lot to, to process, but I'm intrigued, um, much more intrigued, I think, by my father's parents. Uh, and I'm very excited now, because we've actually managed to track down a gentleman who, as a boy, worked for my grandfather's bottle factory in, uh, in Norwich. So now, Harry, tell me, what kind of a factory owner was my grandfather, Bertrand? He was a very kind man, was Mr Armstrong. He had twinkly eyes and a big laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and how old were you when, you when you started? I went to work for his factory age 13. Good Lord, 13. But I remember him well, oh yes. <laughs> Every day when the factory whistle sounded and we boys trooped out, he was always there smiling at the factory gates with a bag of sweets. Sweets? <laughs> oh yes. Would you like a sweet little boy, he used to say. And he'd offer you a ride in his big shiny car. Black it was, with um, blinds on the window. And he had these funny catchphrases, you know, cheerful things he was always saying, you know, like, uh, pip, pip, and uh, keep on smiling, and uh, don't tell your parents. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to know? Um, no, that's, um, that's fine. Actually, I don't think this is, um, I think I might, what's that one with the, with the celebrity ice skating? <laughs> Go on, upload me, people. The Queen's speech is recorded in October. OK. You shouldn't mix vodka with seafood. Clear. Yeah. Chinese kids sit on their hands at I'm school. I'm listening. Sylvester Stallone can't reverse park. Yes. The North Sea's nearly out of car. What's that instead? Hey. Fine. The beaches in Scotland are gorgeous. Good. Red Bull is illegal in France. How do they stay awake? They don't. They just go to sleep. Fair enough. Daley Thompson married his old school teacher. Uh-huh. Drinking your own urine is good for you. Yep. Well? Horses don't like jazz? What the bloody hell do I pay you for, Declan? <laughs> Jumbo Wilkins got shot down last week, and it was, like, really bad, because he died and everything. You know what? Uh, what? I was right next to him when it happened. You're shitting me? I'm, like, here. <laughs> He's, like, just over there. 
He goes up in flames here, loses control of all like the plane in there. And as he's going down, plunging right down, he clips my wing and I almost lose control of my plane. No. And then he cries out. I hear him and he's going, I don't want to die. That is so random. <laughs> you must be very traumatised. Do you know what I mean? So I goes into the group commander, yeah, the next day, and I says, look, I saw this geezer die, yeah, and I almost died myself, so I, like, want some compensation. You should get it, though. You should get compensation for that. That's, like, a really bad thing to happen. But he goes, no way, blood. F off. It's really disrespectful. So then this is me to him, OK? I ain't going up my plane no more if you don't give me compensation, yeah? Like, he can do his own war. It's nothing to do with me. Because, like, it's him that wants you to do it. So then he goes, if you don't go off on your plane anymore, I'm going to punch you and shit and kick you and this, that and everything else, yeah? But this is me back to him, okay? If you touch me right, that's actually assault. That is assault. If they touch you, they're not allowed to do that. You can sue them. I know. So then he says to me, he's going to, like, court-martial me or something as a coward and stuff. And when I'm found guilty, then I'm going to be taken out and shot by a firing squad. Now that is assault. Yes, you can claim for that. <laughs> OK, this is my copy, which I'm going to keep on file. You got a solicitor yet? Good lads. Well, gents, congratulations. You have finally done it. Three months from now, however, we've got to have an album out. We've got to have a tour together. Anyone thinks that's going to happen without each one of us, myself included, giving it 500% is in for a shock. This morning, 3.15am, I had Steve Balaban on the blower from LA. Yeah? Steve Balaban rang to talk about you guys. Yeah? Well done. You deserve it. <clears throat> well done. Cheers. Good lad. OK, I want you to go back to your hotel now and order the most expensive champagne they've got on the menu, all right? I'm going to see you Monday morning when the hard work starts. Get out of here. Come on. Kill them. Unfortunately, Miss Cardio, I am negotiating an obstruction in my breeches by the same tough, knotty, and veined aspect as a Portuguese sailor's arm. <laughs> Mr. Kormanovsky. Here he is. Tony Dorset, the footballing legend. Stand back, Pieter. He's safe. This is the genius who's going to be managing my little premiership football team. Um, no, I've still got two years to run on my contract at least. Tony, Tony, Tony. Don't disappoint me. Hmm? I've had a lot of bad luck with managers. Yeah, well, so as I've heard. How is, uh, how is poor Jimmy? Fine, fine, fine. Yeah. He's dead. <laughs> What was it in the end? Well, they say a heart attack, but his age could have been anything. Huh? 47. <laughs> what was he doing, drinking out of a car battery? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows why there were scorpions in Terry McNamara's kit bag? Huh? Who knows why Bobby hit himself round head with cricket bat? <laughs> that was a royal puzzle. Tony, please. Let us not dwell on their mistakes. <laughs> it is a great day when one gets to meet his hero. Me? Of course. Eh? You know, one night in Kabul back in 84, after a long day fighting with my brother soldiers, I watched you play on a tiny black and white TV against Borussia Dortmund. 
You know, you took the ball from halfway line around five players, then calmly chipped it over the goalkeeper's left shoulder like a Mohaddin warrior. <laughs> that was a great game. It was a Tuesday night. The day you I know. made my first billion, I built a statue of you in my hometown. From concrete. And my own blood. <laughs> Well, that's a nice gesture. <laughs> now, I've had a couple of thoughts about why you lads Tell me, please. <laughs> There's plenty of time for this later. Let's not ruin the beautiful evening, eh? You recognize this? Um. Yeah? <laughs> 81 Milk Cup semi final, header off back post. Your short shorts, Tony, eh? <laughs> Your little shorty shorts. <laughs> Lord, I got them off the eBay. Hmm. Well, I got them off a man who got them off the eBay. A greedy man, but uh, he won't be so greedy anymore. <laughs> Sit down, Tony, please. Right, yeah. uh, would you like some soup? Uh, oh, yeah, great. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this is nice, isn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> Drink up well, because tonight we make fire together. <laughs> what? You and I let us steal fire from the gods and make flames like the cavemen. Wait, do you not want to talk tactics? Have you ever seen a man's fluid in the light of a bonfire, Tony? No. It appears quite... black. Here, take this. We're going to the stadium, to the East Terrace. Well, the one the council's just listed, so it can't be turned into a hotel. <laughs> Here, come. You can put these on in the car. Well, if you've been a good little girl this year. <laughs> oh, I have. Say thank you for the present. Thank you, thank you. Well, that's my pleasure. Well, now, a very Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. And have a wonderful year. Thanks. Bye-bye, Santa. Bye-bye. Thank you. Ho, 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 ho. Kill them. <laughs> One, two... Three impacted. Saw you out with a dog the other day. How is the old thing? Mm. Oh. Four, five, six missing. You know, I had a spot of trouble with my dog last week. I was sitting there watching the old CSI Miami when the dog comes in, dragging along its, excuse my French, backside, <laughs> and leaving this great long stripe of shit on the car. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine extruded. So I took the little fella to the vet, and do you know what she said? She said, his glands need draining. <laughs> Apparently you have to stick your fingers into the dog's anus. <laughs> 10, 11, 12, rotating. Feel for the swollen gland and give it a good squeeze between your thumb and forefinger. <laughs> and the stuff that comes out, I mean, it's absolutely putrid. <laughs> 14, 15 missing. But uh, I've been doing it every day since, and uh, <laughs> the carpet's as clean as a whistle. <laughs> All right, there.
You have a shapely form, Miss Harwood, which provokes a rage of delight in me. And you have a lively tongue, Captain Jennings. Indeed, madam. So lively that should you be on the receiving end of it, you'd be compelled to cram your underskirts into your mouth to keep the windows from shattering. <laughs> Fucking beef. Chef. Is fucking beef ready? Yes, yeah, Chef. No, it's not fucking ready. Look at that, it's fucking overcooked. That is a fucking disgrace. You know that? You are a fucking disgrace. Oi, please. Chef, what the fuck is that? It's the ravioli starter, Chef. Oh, take it back, it's it. Who the fucking loves it? You know what? I'd be ashamed to throw that down my fucking toilet. Fucking chuck in the bin. Who the doing the salmon? Chef. Oh, God, fucking hell. Jesus Christ. What the f have you done there? Oh, God, you f that up, haven't you, you f stupid shit brain twat? <laughs> Jesus Christ, have you always been this fing shit? Did your fing mum used to f. <laughs> you are f. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, he's dead. <laughs> what are we going to do now? This is absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you. Um, Chef insists on simple food sourced locally. Mm. He makes a fine casserole. Doesn't he, though? Return to your countries and spread the word of the Lord. Go with God's blessing. Non incarti fili spiritu e sancti. Amen. Kill them. They've just landed on the moon. <laughs> 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 <laughs>